Hi, I'm Li Ping Wang, the Education Programs Engineer at MathWorks, and a judge at Formula Student China since 2019. Today, I will show you how to use deep learning to detect coins in Formula Student driverless computations. This video was recorded by a race car from Tongji University in China. Like in most Formula Student events, coins of different colors are used to mark the track boundaries, helping driverless cars navigate autonomously. Typically, a driverless car uses a camera and a LiDAR to capture images and point clouds of its surroundings. Images help identify coin colors, while point clouds provide accurate information of coin locations. By calibrating the camera and the LiDAR and fusing the data from both, the car can determine the color and position of each coin, enabling autonomous path planning. Today, we will focus on coin detection in images. For more details on other components, please refer to the reference. When detecting objects in the image, you usually ask two questions. What are they and where are they? By assigning labels and drawing bounding boxes around the objects of interest, as you can see in the image on the right. Of course, you could design your own object detection algorithms or train a deep learning network, and then deploy it directly on hardware. But this process is often iterative and time-consuming. Instead, I'd like to introduce a more efficient workflow for implementing object detection using deep learning in Meta. This workflow has three main steps. First, data labeling, which means going through your images and marking the objects you want to detect. Next, model training. Here you design a deep learning network and train it using the labeled images. Finally, deployment. Once the model is trained, you can use tools in MATLAB to deploy it onto hardware. Like the embedded GPU in a car, so the model can detect coins in real time. Now, let us walk through how to perform these steps in MATLAB. First, we start with data labeling. MetaApp provides interactive apps like Image Labeler, Video Labeler, and LiDAR Labeler. As an example, I will show you how to label cones using the Video Labeler. Welcome to MetaApp. To get started, click the Apps tab and look for Video Labeler in the Image Processing and Computer Vision section. When you found the icon, you can launch the app by clicking it. Or you can just type Video Labeler in the command window. Once the app opens, import your video first. Then create label classes for the objects you want to detect. Next, select one of your label classes and draw a bounding box around each object of that class in every frame. Once you are done, you can save the results to a file or straight to the workspace for later use. To save time, the app also comes with building auto-labeling tools for people, vehicles, and a few other common objects. You can even add your own custom auto-labeling algorithms. I've already prepared two ground truth files, one with red and green coins labeled and another with yellow coin pairs. The yellow coin pairs tell the car whether to go left or right, so I call them yellow coin left and yellow coin right. After labeling the video frames, 
The next step is to design the deep learning network and train it using the labeled data in MATLAB. Traditionally, object detection is done in two stages. First, finding regions of interest, which is called the region proposal stage. And second, classifying the objects within these regions. In the first step, regions of interest are generated using methods like slide windows, selective search, or region proposal networks. In the second step, features are extracted from the regions, either using traditional methods like SIFT or HODGE, or through a convolutional neural network. And then the regions are classified using methods like SVMs, decision trees, or neural networks. Here's a diagram showing how a slide window detector works. In this demo, we are using a UNOX model. UNO stands for you only look once, and it's a one-stage detector. Unlike two-stage models like FASTRCNN, ULO can detect and classify objects in a single pass, which makes it much faster and thus is suitable for real-time applications. There are several versions of ULO, and most of them rely on anchor boxes, which are predefined reference boxes that can help the model predict where objects are and how big they are. For example, in ULO v2, the network includes a filtered extractor and a detection subnetwork that predicts three attributes of each ANCO boxes. ANCO box offsets, refining the position of the ANCO box. Object needs score, indicating how likely the ANCO box contains the object. Class probability which predicts the types of objects in the ANCO box. Finally, the algorithm called non-maximal suppression can be used to filter out overlapping boxes and keep the most confident predictions. If you are interested in how to design, train, and deploy a ULU v2 network, check out the links to these two blog posts. In this demo, we are using ULO X, the ankle free version of ULO introduced in 2021. Instead of relying on predefined ankle boxes, ULO X directly predicts the center of each object, which makes the model smaller and faster. ULO X has three main components backbone. This is a CNN called CSB Darknet 53, pre-trained on a COCO dataset. It attracts features from the input image. Neck. This part connects the backbone to the head. It uses a feature pyramid network to generate feature maps at different scales and a path aggregation network to combine features from multiple layers. Decoupled detection head. This part breaks down the features of each bounding box into three channels, while classification scores indicate the predicted class of the bounding box. Regression scores provide the location, the width, and height of the bounding box. Objectiveness scores reflect the confidence level that the bounding box contains the object. After covering the basics of ULO X, let us jump into MATLAB and see how to design and train a ULO X network. All right, step one, data labeling, which has already been done. Remember, you only need to label your data once. Here, you can start by loading the ground truth file we have saved early and turn it into trailing data using the object detector trailing data function. If you look at the first row of the trailing data, you will see five columns. 
The first one is the frame's file name. And the next four hold the bounding boxes that mark objects' locations and sizes of each class. A bounding box is simply represented by four numbers. The first two gives the location of the top left corner, while the last two represent the width and height of the box. For example, the first row indicates that we have labeled five green cones and seven red cones, which can be confirmed by displaying the image of the first frame. Next, shuffle the data and split it into training, validation, and test sets. It's also a good idea to take a quick look at your data sets before training like counting how many objects you have in each class using the count each label function. In this demo, for example, we are a bit short on the samples of yellow compiles, so adding more could help boost the model's performance. You can also plot the size distributions of the bounding boxes to get a sense of how large or small the labeled cones are throughout the dataset. After analyzing the dataset, you can further improve the model's performance and the generalization by augmenting the training data with transforms like resizing and rotation. Next, you can use the ULOX object detector function to create a ULOX object detector pre-trained on the Tiny Coco dataset. Then set your training options and kick off training using the train ULOX object detector function. The training process takes a while, so for this demo, we will load a pre-trained model instead. You can learn how to evaluate the model's performance on the test dataset using metrics like average precision and precision recall curves. Or you can choose to run the model on a fresh video clip to see how it performs in action. Finally, you also can test the performance of a deep learning network and deploy it onto hardware using Simulink. The deep learning object detector blocks allows you to import a detector from a MAT file or a MATLAB function into Simulink. After running the model, you can see how it performs. If you want to learn more details, please check this YouTube video introducing how to perform deep learning inference in Simulink. Once your deep learning model is ready, the final step is to deploy it onto hardware that can be integrated into a vehicle for real-time use. Meta provides tools like Meta Coder, Simulink Coder, and GPU Coder. These tools can automatically generate C, C++, or CUDA code, and thus accelerate the deployment of your model onto CPUs or GPUs. In this demo, we are using the NVIDIA Jason Xavier, a GPU platform that is suitable for autonomous applications in vehicles. MATLAB's hardware support package further makes it easier to deploy models onto NVIDIA Jetson GPUs. To get started, connect the GPU to a host computer that has met up the required toolboxes and the appropriate hardware support packages installed. Once the model has been trained and deployed, you can either control the model directly from MATLAB or disconnect the host computer and run the model stand alone on the GPU for real-time applications. 
Now let us see the MATLAB code for deploying a deep learning model to an NVIDIA JSON GPU. You also can check out this blog to get more details. Here, the first step is setting up the GPU and the host computer. For more details on how to set up the hardware, please refer to this web page. The main application that we want to deploy is called Con Detection. To run the application on the GPU, you first need to create JSON object using the GPU's IP address, username, and password. After configuring a coder properly, you can use the CodeGen function to automatically generate and combine the application for the GPU. You can start the application using the run application function or stop it using the key application function directly from Meta. When you are done, don't forget to clear the hardware object. Then, let us take a look at the cone detection function. It starts by loading a pre-trained ULOX model and creating a JSON hardware object. Then. It captures images from a camera, detects coins using the UNOX model, draws bounding boxes around the detected coins. At last, displays the allotated image. For this demo, we connected a monitor to the GPU and tested the model using a pre-recorded video from Tongji University instead of using a camera to capture coins in real time. Once the application has been deployed, you can run it on the JSON GPU directly from MATLAB. As you can see, the model can detect most coins in each frame. To summarize, MATLAB makes it easy to go from data labeling to model training, and all the way to deployment on GPUs, all using built-in tools and functions. We list the main product, toolboxes, and hardware support packages you will need to run this demo in MATLAB. For more references, please check these pages on MathWorks.com. You can also exploit the MATLAB Deep Learning Model Hub where well, you will find a lot of pre-trained models, including ULO V8, with new models added every month. MATLAB also supports importing models from PyTorch and TensorFlow, as well as models in Onyx format. For more information on how to use Python with MATLAB, please check out this web page. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at racinglaunch at massworks.com. Thanks for watching.